Welcome back to the frag tank build. I've made some progress on a sump, so let's go check out how it's doing. So here we are. As you can see, it's pretty much complete. I've got the baffles in there and just still waiting for the silicone to dry completely. Uh, so first up, um, that was the old tank I was gonna use. I bought a new one. Petco still had them on sale for 20 bucks. So I figured $20 well spent, have just have a brand new tank there. Save myself any headaches in case, you know, that one ever decided to spring a leak or anything. Uh, so yeah, so um, just went with this classic design. This is the same exact layout that I've used on the last two sumps that I built. So my 180 gallon reef um, is using this exact layout and my little 25 gallon uh, system upstairs has a 10 gallon sump uh, with the same layout. So I've made this uh, style sump out of a 40 breeder which is on my 180, uh, this 20 gallon, which is gonna go into 40 gallon frag tank. And I made a 10 gallon version for the 25 gallon bow front. So this is broken into four main areas. You've got the uh, skimmer section where the water's gonna be flowing into here. You've got a refugium section, the bubble trap, and then the return section. So the skimmer section is one of the most important areas um, in that you need to keep this level at a constant height uh, because skimmers like to be tuned to a specific depth of water and if that water gets higher or lower uh, your skimmer can go crazy so generally these are put in the first section and it'll be a, um, a standing wall there you know don't go from the floor up to a certain height um, and that'll allow the water to come in fill this section up and then overflow out of there so this will always be a constant depth of water there. Uh, your refugium section um, could really be whatever. Um, and then this is gonna come, you know, fill this up and then it's gonna overflow over top of this. So this baffle here is a little bit shorter than that one. And I'll show you all the lengths of these in just a minute. Uh, but the water will fill up in here, um, spill into this bubble trap, be forced down and there's a gap down underneath this one. This one does not go all the way to the floor. So the water comes in, gets forced down under here and then back up. And then what this does is, um, they call that the bubble trap. So the skimmer does output some small micro bubbles um, out of your skimmer, they all do. Generally, you don't want them up in your display. Um, so what we do is uh, allow them to exit into this section where they eventually get forced upwards. So they have to come up and over this first baffle. So that's the first opportunity for the bubbles to hit the surface um, and disappear into the atmosphere. So once it goes over here, they got this whole section where they can, again, if they made it over here and they're still floating in the water, um, to come up to the surface and exit. And again, right here, they get first forced to the surface uh, in order to get through here. So it's another opportunity to lose the bubbles. And then the water comes down and you know bubbles like to float. So in theory, they won't want to go this way. They'll want to go back up. Um, so hopefully none of the bubbles make it through. But if they do, um, it's another opportunity for them to hit the surface and disappear. So hopefully by the time the water gets over to here, all of the micro bubbles are gone and you won't be pumping them back up into your main display. And one other, one other thing on the uh, micro bubbles, um, it's not that they're harmful to your display tank. Uh, in fact, some people think that they are beneficial, uh, but a lot of people don't want them in their display all of the time uh, because it can kind of make your water look cloudy. Um, so you generally try and keep them out of there. Uh, but there is something called micro bubble scrubbing, which is a whole separate topic. Um, and there's benefits on that. So you guys can go search on that uh, if you're interested. But uh, the reason why you try and keep them out of here is just to keep your water looking um, you know, more clear than having a bunch of little bubbles floating around. They don't actually harm the corals or anything, but it does look nicer without them having you know, floating all over the place. A little bit about the construction, uh, not a whole lot to it. It's a standard 20 gallon tank. Bought it at Petco yesterday for 20 bucks. I got four uh, glass baffles cut from a local glass company and they cost me <clears throat> $8 each. So I spent $32 on glass and you know every time I <laughs> put in one of my videos how much I spent on something. Somebody usually comments that, you know, hey, they got it cheaper. So um, if you did, 
or you need no place to get these things cheaper, good for you. Congratulations. I'm really happy. Uh, but that's what I paid. So you know, twenty dollars plus thirty-two, so uh, fifty-two dollars, and then a tube of silicone. So what about ten dollars? So you can make a, a twenty-gallon sump for about sixty-two dollars, which isn't bad. All right. So as far as the dimensions on the glass baffles, um, here's how I came up with everything. Uh, first of all, I used quarter-inch glass. Um, quarter-inch glass is pretty strong, it's pretty sturdy. You can bang into it, it's not going to crack. So I would recommend using that. Don't use like eighth inch, which is really thin and you can crack it really easily. So I went with quarter inch glass here. Um, and then, you know, I need to know the length and the height. So for the, um, or the width of this, uh, it's pretty, you know, straightforward. I mean, you could measure, you know, inside, but it's a little bit difficult to know exactly the dimension um, and you can get a pretty good idea from the side so you know once you, you think you've got the measurement that you need <clears throat> I would recommend taking a piece of wood cut it to that dimension and just make sure I mean I thought I needed 11 and a half and it turns out I needed 11 and three quarters so put I cut a little 11 three quarters um, with put the piece of wood in there and that was the perfect size. Um, you definitely don't want to be too big because it won't fit. You won't be able to use it. And if you're too short, um, you're going to be using a lot of silicone to fill the gap. So you want it just the right size. So in my case, it was 11 and 3 quarters inches for this. Um, then, so I know the thickness, the width. I need to know the height. So for the skimmer section, um, again, it's pretty easy to figure out what the height I should use because I just went to the manual for my skimmer and it tells me that uh, this skimmer works from seven inches to nine inches but it's best suited from seven and a half to eight inches so I decided to go eight inches so that was you know, my height right here so eight inches tall for this uh, no big deal there uh, then these baffles over here well the water's going to flow over here it needs to overflow this one so this needs to be shorter than that one so I made this one seven inches. So water will come into here. Um, this one's also seven inches. This one really doesn't matter because um, that one's raised up off the floor. So as long as this is above that, we're in good shape. So that was also seven inches. And then this one over here, I also made seven inches. Um, Could have made this one a little shorter, but um, the water's going to fill up to here, seven inches into here. It's going to fill up seven inches and it's going to go fall over. It's not going to go back this way. It's where it just travels, you know, where it's easiest to go. Uh, so it falls into here, and then this section right here um, is the only section which is going to vary in height as water evaporates. So in here is where I'll be putting my auto top off. So probably, you know, level around here. I'll keep the water level uh, here, and then if it evaporates, the auto top off will you know, top, top it back up. So this level just needs to be lower than up here. And yeah, so that, that's how I come up with the dimensions of them. And then as for the positions, um, you know, just base it on your equipment. So uh, that's basically how I wanted to put my skimmer. So put my glass baffle here. Uh, I needed enough room for my pump. So gave myself extra room in case I replace this pump. That should be plenty big enough to, you know, fit any pump that I need there. Um, and then I think I gave myself an inch and a half for each one of these, you know, in case something falls down there, I could get in there with some tweezers and pick it back up. And that just left me whatever was left over uh, for my refugium section. So that's how I come up with all the dimensions there. As far as construction, here's what I did and some tips, you know, helped me get this together easy. Um, so I just got a couple pieces of wood and some clamps. Uh, put them exactly where I want it, the glass to be. Uh, lean the glass up against there, and I just used a piece of masking tape to hold it in place. Um, so it was, you know, right where it needs to be. And just took my silicone and, you know, put a bead all along the, the seam, across the bottom, back up this side. Let it sit for a couple of hours until it was dry, and I could remove the pieces of wood. Took them out, and then just did the other side. And, you know, let that dry. Uh, just, you know, did all the different baffles that way. 
Um, you technically don't need to do both sides. Um, as you can see here, I only did one side on each, um, which will hold. But if you can get your hands in there, it doesn't hurt to do both sides. It will just make it stronger. But if you can only get one side, that's okay too. It'll work. Um, and this is not my best silicone work, <laughs> but it'll, it'll do. And yeah, so that's uh, about all there is to it. And last thing I could say about the silicone is... Um, don't underestimate how long it takes to dry and don't get impatient like I was because the stuff probably takes longer to set than you think that it does. Um, so just, you know, give it time. Uh, this will probably take you a good day to get everything, all the pains in there that you need, uh, if not, you know, two days or so. And yeah, that's about it. Um, I think that's all I could say about this right now. I'm anxious to just let that silicone cure and then I'm gonna you know give this fill this up with some tap water I uh, just leak test all of the little seals that I got there and then if everything's good this will be heading upstairs and get plumbed into the frag tank so hopefully you guys found this informative if you did hit that like button if you got any questions leave a comment uh, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more and I will catch you guys in the next video thanks for watching